darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a children's book and it's also LGBT. It focuses on 12 year old Ivy who gets her first crush on a girl, and Ivy's trying to figure out how to handle that. So, a big part of this book is changes and who we are as a person and trying to figure out who you are. Ivy's at a point where she and her classmates are just starting to hit puberty and they're starting to change and they're at this cusp of um, sort of mostly being children still, but also transitioning into being adults and teenagers. And it's a little bit scary and awkward and confusing. And it's especially confusing to Ivy because all of her friends all her girls, they are crushing on boys and they spend a large amount of their time talking about the boys that they have crushes on and what they're going to say to them and how they're going to bump into them accidentally. And Ivy feels left out because she doesn't have a crush on any boy. In fact, she kind of just wants to hold a girl's hand. Like she's been having these fantasies about escaping into this treehouse with a girl and just holding hands together and just being there. And she doesn't feel comfortable telling her friends this. Um, so she feels like she has this really big secret to hide. And most of those secrets are being held in her notebook in this very physical form that if somebody got their hands on, they would be able to see. And the book starts off with there being a tornado and Ivy's house gets destroyed. Luckily, she managed to have her notebook on her when she had to run into, like, the root cellar for shelter. And she and her family all survive, and her notebook makes it out. However, when they're staying at the school overnight, since, you know, they don't have a house anymore, uh, her notebook goes missing, and she starts freaking out because somebody has it. Somebody knows her secrets, and she doesn't know what they're going to do about it. And when she goes back to school and starts getting a page out of her notebook back each day, it's clear that somebody knows and somebody's very interested in the fact that Ivy's been drawing pictures of her with a girl. And she spends a large part of this book trying to figure out who has her notebook and why. She is also getting notes from the person telling her that she should talk to somebody about how she feels. And Ivy starts writing back. At first it's like, why is this any of your business? And then as they're like, you know, I really think it would be good for you, they start having like this pen pal relationship happening. But Ivy still doesn't know who the other person is. Ivy's life is also pretty stressful, especially with her family. I mean, on one hand, they just lost all of their possessions. They lost all their family photos. And this house that her great-great-grandparents built is gone. And her family's displaced and they're having to rely on other people for help and it's not necessarily comfortable and also the fact that there are six of them um both of ivy's parents plus her her older sister layla and then twin baby brothers that are three months old and all of them are renting one room and a bed and breakfast and sharing it and sleeping in two beds and there's a lot of stress just from the chaos of having six people living in one room in such a small space. Um, especially as they start gathering more stuff, like they start getting more clothes and toys donated and just it feels so cramped sometimes. Ivy's also having problems with feeling left out from her parents because they, especially her mom, are spending so much time taking care of the twins. I mean, they're babies, they need a lot of attention. And Ivy doesn't feel like she's getting attention from her parents anymore. And all the things that she and her mom used to do, they're not doing anymore. Her mom and her started writing these books. And they're published. I mean, they're really good books. And they're... her mom used to write several of them a year. And Ivy and Layla would help her come up with ideas and drawings. And her mom hasn't worked on one in, like, the entire year and Ivy's missing that. She's missing being able to show her mom her work, especially since her mom is the one who like taught her how to draw. And then there's also stress with her relationship with her older sister, Layla. Um, so Ivy was about to show her older sister her paintings about her and a girl, 
when she overhears Layla and Layla's best friend Gigi having a fight that results in them not talking anymore. And the fight was over Gigi having a girlfriend and Layla not knowing about it. And Ivy thinks that it's Layla's mad at Gigi because she likes girls. And so she's afraid that her older sister isn't going to like her anymore if she finds out that Ivy also might like girls. There's also just change in her relationships with all her friends. Like, she and her best friend Taryn used to do everything together. And then Taryn started talking about boys all the time. And Ivy just doesn't know how to deal with that since she doesn't like boys. Um, Ivy does make a new friend, though, with the new girl in school named June. And they start hanging out together. And Ivy starts teaching June how to draw, and they're, they're getting along great. There's so much fun together. And Ivy starts to get her first real crush on her, and is trying to figure out first how to deal with having a crush. Like all these strange hormones and things happening, like when you get butterflies on your stomach, and it simultaneously feels really awkward, but also kind of good at the same time. And then also trying to figure out whether or not June might like her back and whether or not it's okay that Ivy even likes girls. Um, even if June doesn't like her back, is June going to be okay with Ivy liking girls? Luckily though, Ivy has an awesome role model, like one of my favorite characters in this entire book, in Robin, who owns the bed and breakfast. And Robin is gay and she has a girlfriend. In fact, sorry. Robin has a fiance and she is planning a wedding. And Ivy is so fascinated by this and she wants to know so much about like what it's like for two girls to be together and what that could look like and how it could work out and some of the things that are really complicated about it too. So I love just Robin sitting her down and telling her the truth. She's super supportive about anything. You know, it doesn't matter whether or not you like guys or girls and liking girls can be really complicated and not everybody is going to be thrilled about it. And is really just this, this beacon of what actually life is like to her and this adult that sits down and tries to tell her um, what being an adult is like and what her future might look like. And it gives Ivy a ton of hope and I really love Robin as a character. And there's also a little bit with Gigi, although we don't see her for much of the book because she's not talking to Layla, but it's also really important for Ivy to see another girl somewhat close to her age. I mean, I think Gigi's like four years older than her, but to see somebody in school also having their first girlfriend. Um, and Gigi tells her like, look, I didn't tell anybody I was gay and that I like girls until I was 16. And that's fine too. So she doesn't need to know all the answers right now. And there's also a really big emphasis on this book about it not being, it's not about who you're with, but about who you are as a person and that it's okay, which I really love. Like this book has so much stuff happening. It is so complicated and a little bit confusing for Ivy. Um, but it also feels hopeful. And I love it. It's also really, really cute. So one of my favorite parts about this book is that Ivy doesn't necessarily know how to describe everything. So she resorts to drawing things or describing what, what she would draw. So for instance, this passage from the book is when June and Ivy are first drawing pictures together. Now, as June practically glowed next to her, Ivy's stomach fluttered with happiness. She tried to remember a time when she and Taryn had so much fun that it made her all giddy and trembly. She couldn't. If she drew this feeling, it would be soft flowing waves, the color of a delicate pink ballet slipper. In fact, that's exactly what she wanted to do. Draw this feeling in her notebook. Maybe a few sketches of June learning to draw. Ivy never thought she could do something that could make someone so happy. Yeah, the writing in this book is amazing and the way that Ivy sees the world is so fun and interesting and different and cute and I love it. I love the way that this book can deal with really really complicated things and try to make sense of it but also say that it's okay not to have everything figured out at the same time which is a really important message to have and I related to this book a lot just from being in middle school myself once upon a time and remembering how confusing it is and what it feels like when you and your friends aren't all maturing at the same level and you aren't all into the same things at the same time and how stressful it can be to be in a big family and to have so many younger siblings 
and to feel like your parents don't have time for you because they're spending so much time taking care of them. So I love this book. It feels real and still fun and sweet. Thank you, Tim. Oh, I adore this book so much, guys. So totally check out Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World. It's amazing. It is totally a five-star read. I definitely recommend it. You can definitely give it to a child also because it is written at a middle school reading level, upper elementary school maybe. I also love the fact that the title of this book comes from an Emily Dickinson quote that's mentioned in here a couple of times. And it's, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. And how that just encapsulates this book as Ivy's notebook is kind of her letter to the world and her trying to make sense of it and not always feeling like the world is talking back to her, but that sometimes you still need to put yourself out there anyway. If you've read this book, let me know in the comments below what you've thought of it or what other books should I be reading. So peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye. This book's amazing. So good. So good.